What's up, everybody? JJ Buckets here. You already know that. Of course you do. Don't mind me. I know it's like 11.13 p.m. when I'm filming this, but I still think it's time to talk basketball. <laughs> now, I'm going to apologize in advance for the lighting or anything of the sort. I very obviously do not film at this hour usually, so it's a new experience for me. <laughs> but despite that, I just wanted to, you know, film this now while I had the time and while I guess all the thoughts are still fresh in my head and just drop thoughts on Jesus. I, it, it really is 11 p.m. with this, isn't it? <laughs> uh, I wanted to drop my thoughts on the fact that the Raptors landed a top four pick. Let's go. <laughs> now, if you've been following this channel for a while, you know that I have been begging the draft gods, and by the draft gods, I mean Adam Silver's corrupt hand, to give the Raptors a top four pick for a while now. <laughs> and my goodness, we got it. We got it. I mean, like, of the best case scenario of us getting a top four pick, it's the worst case scenario that we got the number four. But you know what? It's still really exciting because I think no matter who you get in that top four, it's going to be much better than anybody you would have grabbed at like the number seven or the number eight where the Raptors very realistically could have ended up. So this is a win. This is an absolute win for this Raptors team. I think the difference between picking at these spots is huge. First of all, while I get sidetracked for a second here, shout out to all of you that came out and watched the live stream on Clutch Takes channel. Obviously, if you did, you would know that I was on it in person and everything. <laughs> it was great. Uh, shout out to the Canadian vaccination rate, kind of allowing for that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I know I'm rambling a little bit here, but I'm collecting my thoughts here. And the point that I wanted to make was the guys that you could have got at like the number, in the, number seven, number eight, they would have been good players. And they would have been players that you would have gotten a chance to really develop and turn them into something being in the top four is such a game changer for the Raptors, truly. And I just want to go into why that is. I think it's no mystery and it's no secret that the top four and potentially top five, depending on how you view Jonathan Kuminga, in this draft are considered to be significantly better prospects than the rest of this draft. So I think for the Raptors, the opportunity to draft in that top four is monumental. Because I think there's a lot of interesting things that they can do from where they are now. And the opportunities are really endless for... Well, endless. Uh, the opportunities are really about three, three or four guys. <laughs> but they're endless in the sense that, you know, you have an opportunity to maybe trade up now and really get the guy that you want without giving up too much. You have the opportunity to maybe trade down if you feel like you're in a position that you can still get your guy at, say number five or maybe even number six i probably wouldn't think so but at least like number five you have an opportunity here to really get a potential franchise altering talent because that's all that's been talked about with this class right is the discussion has been that a lot of these guys that are here one through four again potentially five depending on how you feel about kuminga but the guys that are here one through four and a lot of other years would be number one picks. I mean, like, I look at a guy like Evan Mobley, uh, who the Raptors might have a chance to take, right? And he would be a number one pick easily in almost any other year that didn't have Kate Cunningham. Jalen Green, you can make the same argument for. I don't know if you necessarily make that argument for Suggs or uh, Kuminga, but you can certainly try and make it. And the point here being is that these guys are all just insanely good talents and the Raptors are now in position to land one of them and it is truly an exciting thought. Does it suck that, you know, it's not the number one pick and it's not Kay Cunningham? Like, yeah. I mean, obviously, dream scenario would have been getting that number one pick and drafting Cade and immediately just jump-starting the retool for the Raptors. It would have been phenomenal to see. And Cade Cunningham will obviously make the Detroit Pistons a very exciting team for the foreseeable future, which is weird to say because it's the Pistons and the last time the Pistons were like truly good Lord knows I can't even remember how old I would have been at the time I guess they were good for a little bit longer. I, I, I would have been in like, I don't know elementary middle school something like that <laughs> so Congrats to the Pistons. I guess you guys got a franchise altering talent but for the Raptors it's honestly, they're in a great position. 
If you watched during the live stream, you would have known that I talked about the idea of Toronto potentially trading up at, you know, to the three or to the two. And I really do think that is 100% on the table for the Raptors. I was talking about it in the stream, but I'll reiterate it here. It's been a little bit since we've seen Masai be truly aggressive, right? So I truly believe that there's a great chance that if there is a guy that the Raptors really like and are really sold on amongst this top four or five, they are going to move up and make sure that they ensure their guy. If, say, there's somebody at number two that they want to go and get that they don't feel like will be there otherwise, I would not be surprised to see them orchestrate a deal with the Houston Rockets. I think the Rockets are in a position where they want to accumulate draft picks and potentially just fill a lot of holes because that roster has a lot of holes, whereas the Raptors are really not a roster, comparatively speaking, that has that many holes. I mean, they're pretty much set with... A pretty decent core here between OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, Fred Van Vliet, depending on how you feel about him at this point in time, Gary Trent Jr., but I'll get into why maybe he isn't a part of the future plans, excuse me, like I said, it's like 11, <laughs> give me a break, <laughs> um, but yeah, like, you have a good core here, and you're realistically one potentially special piece away from reinserting yourself back in, I mean, I think with a top four pick, they're going to easily reinsert themselves back into the playoffs for sure. I think this was down year for the Raptors for factors that were outside of the actual talent level of the guys here. So I think they're easily a playoff team this year. I think with a top four pick versus a number seven, number eight, though, they're going to reinsert themselves back into worst case scenario, the middle of the Eastern Conference, especially because now they're in a position where they can go get a guy that they like in the draft, and they can go fill a lot of holes with the cap space that they have in free agency. So it's really, at this point, it is going to be a super exciting offseason for the Raptors. When it comes to the number four pick, or more specifically, potentially moving up, I mean, the conversation here is, past Cade, I don't want to say the guys are interchangeable, but depending on, I guess, whose team scouts you ask, you know, Evan Mobley might be the second best player in this draft. Jalen Green might be the second best player in this draft. Jalen Suggs might be the second best player in this draft. And I think that, I guess, I don't want to say indecisiveness, but that, I'm going to rephrase again, excuse me, we're, we're late right now. <laughs> the fact that those guys seem so closely interwoven and so close together in terms of one could realistically leapfrog the other, I don't think it'll take a lot for the Raptors to potentially jump up a spot or two to get the guy they really want. For me, personally at this point, Evan Mobley or Jalen Green. Those, one of those two guys, that's what you want for your team. Mobley obviously potentially solves the center issue. Jalen Green, on the other hand, potentially solves a whole lot more issues in terms of just scoring in the half court and having a true bona fide scorer on this team that is very skilled and has the potential to also be a really good defender. He has the potential of being an elite, you know, two-way wing in this league. So I personally really like Jalen Green. When this whole draft process started, or I guess when the whole process of me doing my draft scouting videos started, I was really hoping that Evan Mobley would be the guy for Toronto. I still think Evan Mobley can be the guy for Toronto. I would not be mad if, say, there's a scenario that the Raptors end up with Evan Mobley. But I think the longer this period has gone on, for me personally, I've really enjoyed looking at Jalen Green more and more, and I really like his game more and more. And frankly, I look at the three guys there. Again, I would be happy with either Green or Mobley, but I think that Green is your guy. I really do. I think he solves so many issues for you in terms of scoring, in terms of creating offense when offense stalls out. And again, you add a guy that has the potential to be a very good defender in this league, maybe elite. I mean, he has all the athletic skill sets. He just needs a coach like a Nick Nurse that can teach him how to play proper defense because his G League Ignite team had so many communication issues on defense and so many responsibilities were blown and just not communicated well between that team. I don't think you're going to see that with the Toronto Raptors. I think Jalen Green has the chance to take that two-guard spot and hold it down for the next decade and a half for Toronto if everything goes well. <laughs> so at this point, I think Jalen Green is our guy. I really would like to see the Raptors take him and then maybe orchestrate a trade. I've said it a million times. I'll say it once more. I even said it during the stream this <laughs> tonight on Clutch's channel. 
I'd really love to see them go get somebody like a Miles Turner. And then what's the lineup that you're looking at moving forward? Fred Van Vliet, Jalen Green, <laughs> OG Ananobi, Pascal Siakam, Miles Turner. That screams so much potential to me that it's hard not to get excited about it. It's, it's really hard. <laughs> Why wouldn't you get excited about it? Ah, I think at this point, moving forward with this offseason, this is going to be one of the most exciting offseasons in Raptors history. And I so look forward to just seeing what Masai and company do from here. It's, truly, I think, <laughs> I think the Raptors will be right back into the mix next year. And I'm super, super excited. Just I guess that's just the theme. I am excited at this point to just see what we have from moving forward from this team. Other than that, I think that's just going to be my, the video for today. I just want to hit pretty much my thoughts on this draft. Again, if you tuned into the live stream on uh, Clutch Takes channel, thank you. And if you haven't, go rewatch that. The re like the reaction that we have when the Raptors were confirmed to be in the top four. Basically, as soon as we saw the number seven pick and we saw that it wasn't the Raptors, which meant that the Raptors had leapfrogged, the reaction was hilarious. <laughs> so go check that out on his channel. Uh, give him a uh, subscribe as well. <laughs> Sorry, uh, my like, I have been talking for a while. I've been talking all night, <laughs> frankly, and it has been insane. And I have, in case you haven't noticed, I have shot this particular video in like one really long take. So my like speech is just giving out on me and I think that's a good good sign to call the video where it is uh, thank you guys so much for watching I know this is different in terms of the presentation style and what I usually do on this channel and I know the lighting is different because usually I'm filming during the day when I have a nice sun and like the window is just shining in here so I know all of that diff is different hopefully the quality of what I'm saying makes up for all of that and hopefully just like me, you are super excited about the Raptors' future from here because I think there's a lot of reason to be. We got our pick. We're one good trade away and a bunch of really nice free agency signings away from filling out this roster and being a competitive team again and just being in a great position moving forward. This was a great night for the Raptors and for us Raptors fans. And yeah... Other than that, that's going to do for me today. No usual stick about like the subscribing to this channel in terms of like the percentages, but you know, it's something I care about. So do it if you want, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> it is late during the night and I'm officially going to call this video here. It's JJ Buckets signing off. <laughs>